When working with PHP, you might want to configure and customize certain things within the PHP. That's why PHP comes with the PHP configuration file, which is called php.ini. The location of this file will depend on a few factors like server operating system and so on. For example, if you're using XAMPP like I am in this case, it makes it simple to check and update the php.ini file. You can just click on config next to Apache and you can find the php.ini here, open it and update whatever you need. Just a few things to note here, the text enclosed in the square brackets here is exactly Ignored. semicolon indicates that it's a comment so all this will be ignored it's just comments or documentation and then you can find the individual settings or also called directives in here so if we scroll down we can see the short open tag is set to off and everything above it is just comments explaining what this directive does there are a lot of options that can be configured and we won't go through all of them because we don't have the time but we can go through some of the important ones I have the list of available uh, directives open here and the PHP docs and I will leave the link to this uh, page in the description. The first column here is just the name of the directive. The second one is the default value of that directive. The third one is changeable and then the fourth one is changelog. Now I would not worry about the changeable column too much. This basically just indicates where this directive can be changed from. You could use functions like ini get and ini set to get and update the directives. But some of these directives cannot be updated through PHP during runtime time it can only be updated through the php ini file if it says php ini system or per dir then you cannot use ini underscore set to update the directive now as mentioned the ini set updates the value of the directive during the runtime and what that means that it will only be effective during the script execution I will be using ini set throughout this lesson to set the directive values at runtime for the sake of demonstration. Even though it's fine to use ini set for certain use cases in a real application, you would want to set those at PHP ini configuration file. Note that once you update your PHP ini, you might need to restart your Apache server for those changes to take effect. So let's go over some of the important directives. The first one we're going to go over is the error reporting. And let me take notes here. Error reporting, error log, and display errors. So error reporting allows you to set different levels of uh, PHP error reporting. So for example, if we open the PHP INI and we search for error underscore reporting, we see that it's set to E all. That means that all errors, including warnings, notices, and everything will get reported. And as you can see, you could change that and you could use bitwise operator to decide the level of your error reporting. For example, this right here hides the deprecated and strict notices from the page, while during the development, E all just reports everything as mentioned you could change this during the runtime right so we could do here var dump i and i get and we can do error reporting and let's refresh and this is just a representation of e all value this is a constant so if we did var dump e all we see that it's the same value for example if we have an array that has only one value that is at the zeroth index if we try to access an array element that doesn't exist something like this we'll get a warning but we can set it in our error reporting to ignore warnings and not display it on the string though this is not recommended at all you should always use e all for development and even sometimes in production because it allows you to fix your box ahead of time but for the sake of demonstration we can do ini set and simply do not a warning and we need to set error reporting here and now if we refresh the warning is gone note that you could also set error reporting using the error underscore reporting function but we'll talk about that in the next lesson and if you don't understand how this works it's just the bitwise operators and you could check my lesson on bitwise operators in this course to review it so let's remove this we get the warning displayed again and the next item is display errors and display errors simply just indicates whether you want to display errors on the screen or not so we can say display errors here and we get the value one and we can set to zero and if we refresh now we no longer see the errors now in production it would probably set display errors to zero so you wouldn't show any of the sensitive information within your errors to the user but instead it would log your errors and that's where the error log comes in so error log basically indicates where the error should be logged we'll talk about the error handling in the next lesson more next we have post max size and we haven't covered forms or posting data but this setting basically determines how much data can be posted 
included in a request. Next, we have max execution time, and this just sets the maximum number of seconds the script can run before it is timed out and terminated. By default, it's set to 30 seconds, and for example, if we set max execution time to say three seconds, and here we sleep for five seconds, and then we echo out hello world, Let's see what happens. So it's going to sleep for five seconds, but our max execution time is set to three. We're going to get the fatal error that the maximum execution time has exceeded. Next, we have memory limit, and this just sets the maximum amount of memory a script can consume. So we can check what is currently set in our case, and we're going to refresh the page, and we get 512 megabytes. Now to trigger the out of memory error, we can set some kind of string here equals to X, and then we could do some kind of loop that runs about a thousand times, and just append string to itself, and then we could echo out the string. And if we refresh, we're going to get the fatal error. Now we could also set the memory limit to minus one, which removes the memory limit entirely, but I would advise against it because it's better to always find a way to optimize your code to see where the memory is being consumed. That way you're not running into memory issues. All right, let's move on to the next directive and that is file uploads. And this just enables or disables the file uploads on PHP. We haven't talked about the file uploads yet, and we'll talk about that later, so don't worry about it right now. Related to file uploads, we also have upload tmp directory, and this just indicates the temp folder where the temp files will be stored when doing file uploads. We also have the upload max file size here. Another one we have is the date time zone, and that is the default time zone that you set. Next, we have include path, and we covered this briefly when we talked about including PHP files and this just specifies the list of directories where the require include require once and include once and other functions that deal with opening files would look for files by default. We'll talk more about the PHP INI and more advanced configuration directives once we get to the security part of this course, because there are some directives that you should keep disabled and some directives like session directives that you should know and be aware of how they work when it comes to security. So this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my tutorials, please give this video a thumbs up, share and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.